e-learning has become increasingly important for Nigerian students in higher institutions for many reasons. According to advocates, it provides flexibility and convenience, allowing students to access educational resources and content from anywhere at any time. To them, the initiative is particularly beneficial for Nigerian students who may face challenges such as limited physical infrastructure or long commuting distances to universities. The initiative, the Opine, also often requires fewer resources compared to traditional classroom-based learning, reducing the need for physical facilities, textbooks and other costly materials making education more affordable and accessible for Nigerian students especially beneficial for students who come from low-income backgrounds and may struggle to finance their education. Now joining us to espouse the importance of e-learning in Nigeria is an educationist, founder and CEO of Nextford University, Fadel Artazi. Welcome to Newsday. Thank you. Good to be with you today. Aaron. All right. Um, first of all, I must say, um, we're saying ne Nextford has been trying to push this e-learning. Anytime you open... Digital platforms you always see in Nextford always advertising. Talk to us. What's explain what Nextford is offering in terms of e-learning to Nigerians? So Nextford is a U.S.-based uh, tech-enabled university. What that means is we deliver education that's 100% online and that's specifically designed to offer both high-quality and affordable education to learners all across the world. So we have learners in over 100 countries today, uh, Nigeria being one of our largest markets. Essentially, we give people the opportunity to build skills that are relevant to the jobs of today and tomorrow, whether that's through courses or certificates or degree programs. We want to enable folks to render factors like their physical location, their race, their gender, their ethnicity, to no longer be barriers to their ability to move forward in life. Very good, sir. How would you assess e-learning penetration in Nigeria's higher education sector and um, what are the prospects and challenges currently? So maybe starting with the latter part, you know, the, the, the challenges I would say predominantly are both infrastructure and awareness. So, uh, you know, as Aaron indicated earlier, you know, whether it's connectivity or bandwidth or cost of data remain challenging for many markets across Africa and including Nigeria. Um, the second is awareness when it comes to the efficacy or the effectiveness of online education uh, and the credibility. So it's a relatively new modality, although it's existed for a couple of decades now, uh, but the level of awareness has been on the rise since uh, COVID-19, but relative to tradi traditional schools still, obviously, uh, there's less awareness. Um, the, the, the other part of your question, you know, um, Nigerians, I think, uh, are among the, 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 the populations that invest the most as a percentage of their income in education across the world. So we see Nigerians really value education more than most other societies. Uh, in our graduation that we held here in Nigeria a few days ago, uh, you know, I cited this example that the average uh, Nigerian Americans are twice as educated as any other uh, immigrant group in the U.S. Um, so we see, you know, Nigerians are super dedicated uh, to learning uh, and, uh, and have this real, you know, quest and thrive for both knowledge and advancement. So we're really happy to, to be here and to be serving the wider Nigerian community. All right, let's talk about adoption, because when you look at the e-learning drive, some people would always want to think that it doesn't carry the same gravitas as going to the four walls of the university, because... People talk about the university as a place whereby you go to open your mind, so to speak. And they talk about the university as a place whereby you, a lot of things happen, interactions, and it shapes who you become as a human being, especially on the career path. What e-learning does it give? What, does it, what are the benefits? And what does it give that probably maybe rivals or probably mirrors what the conventional universities do give? Yeah, so it's interesting you ask that, you know, given the, the, the level of interactions happening online today or the volume of interactions happening online probably exceeds offline in general, right? <laughs> Whether in the workplace or on social okay. media, there's a lot more happening online than offline. And, and that's only going to increase over time, right? Having said that, these stereotypes continue to exist. 
but the data says otherwise. So the overwhelming majority of data in markets that have been offering online education for a while, like the US or the UK, uh, shows that outcomes are not compromised online. On the contrary, actually, um, you know, a lot of research shows that graduates of online schools uh, have superior outcomes or have achieved superior outcomes compared to traditional schools. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you the reason why is that when you're studying online, often there's a greater need for um, skills such as discipline and time management and, uh, um, and perseverance. You know, psychologically, when you have to go to a building to do something and, you, you know, uh, you're, you, you, don't, you need less discipline, right? Yeah. Uh, but also there's more, more to hide or more places to hide. You know, when you go to a campus and you sit in a classroom and you're dozing off at the, you know, and sort of, you know, falling asleep in a lecture, technically you're there, mm -hmm. right? So you've signed that, you've sort of ticked that box that I went to my lecture today. Whereas online, you really need to show continuous progress and there's a lot more ability to measure that progress. So think about if you're sitting in a physical classroom, how can a faculty member measure what you've achieved during the past 60 minutes? It's very difficult. But in a digital environment, there's a lot of tools and infrastructure that exist to measure progress on a daily basis. Okay. Uh, so overwhelmingly, I think that that myth has sort of been uh, debunked to a large extent. Uh, well, not just through Nexford. I mean, many other of the leading online universities have debunked it. All right. Very good, Fadl. Now, we're in e an era of misinformation. And of course, uh, uh, those are some of the pitfalls when it comes to, you know, digital age, as it were. So is that having any negative impact on you know, e-learning, as it were, in Nigeria? Or even from a global context as well? You know, I think um, historically, uh, learners across the world have suffered from, uh, I would say, misinformation or misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. When you've had a lot of uh, so-called uh, degree mills maybe across the world, which are essentially non-authentic or inauthentic or non-accredited universities, unfortunately, scamming folks all across the world. So some have suffered from that historically. Uh, but again, in, in the era of, of misinformation or in the digital era, these sorts of trends tend to surface and make headlines. But if you actually compare to the amount of uh, misrepresentation or fraud happening offline, you know, there's a lot more scams happening offline than online. Maybe they're just not making it uh, to, to headlines mm -hmm. as much. Having said all of that, I think today's consumers are much more educated than ever. They have access to verification tools that far surpass anything they've had in the past. Mm -hmm. Within two minutes, one can almost, you know, very, very easily authenticate, you know, is this a real school? Is it accredited? Let me check. Do they have references? Who's been talking about them? Who are their graduates? So I think that's becoming less and less of an issue mm -hmm. uh, given the wide availability of data. All right. Before we, okay, let me just take you up on this. Um, COVID-19 was a blessing to some and a cost to others um, for the education sector, especially e-learning. How did, how, what was the impact of COVID-19 on e-learning, so to speak? So I think COVID significantly accelerated awareness of online, like what happened over a two to three period, two to three year period was likely going to take maybe 10 years to happen. The level of awareness and understanding of the credibility of online uh, really leapfrogged development, which has been fantastic for accessibility all across the world. Um, so that's been, that's been fantastic. I think it has also to a large extent surfaced the realities of how ineffective a lot of the traditional university models are. Because what happened in reality is a lot of these offline universities simply digitized an outdated experience. So instead of delivering, I'm going to say, you know, ineffective slash boring lecture in a physical classroom, they were now delivering that ineffective, boring lecture on a Zoom session. So everyone across the world could see that and could see people maybe dozing off even on cameras. So uh, that's not e-learning. That's a digitized version of an outdated experience. But at the same time, it gave birth to the true innovators to be able to create really effective online education options. And in markets like Nigeria, I think they've been a beneficiary. Because don't forget, Nigeria has a significant supply-demand shortage. So the issue isn't really to compare online to offline. It's almost, an, it's almost an irrelevant comparison. There is simply not enough capacity. The entire nation has less than 800,000 university seats, whereas it produces 3 million high school graduates. So there's just no way to fill that demand. There's no way to address the economy's biggest challenges using traditional physical universities. Mm. 
Interesting yeah. perspectives there. Fadl al Tazi, the founder and CEO of Nextwood University, would like to thank you for your perspective on e-learning in Nigeria and other issues as well. It's good to have you with us. Thank you. Good to be here. Oh,